Sarah stretches as she steps outside into the crisp autumn air for her daily solo walk. But today, even the vibrant fall foliage seems dreary. She trudged down the wooden trail, a heavy feeling in her chest. The alone time that had rejuvenated her now leaves Sarah feeling hollow and melancholy. Her footsteps echo against the silence. Why has solitude gone from free and to oppressive? Sarah thinks back to laughing with friends last night, yet feeling disconnected. She laments having no one to share this walk with. A falling leaf startles her. She is hyper aware of being alone, like Chihiro at the start of Spirit Away. Sarah feels lost and isolated in a once familiar world. The forest trail now seems a lonely abyss rather than a refuge. Is solitude just isolation after all? Sarah's craving for companionship confuses her. Didn't she seek solitude to find herself? When did her refuge become a prison? Sarah blinks back tears as she walks, a hollow pit in her stomach. She misses the days when solitude brought connection rather than isolation. As Sarah walks, lost in thought, loneliness hangs over her like a storm cloud. She longs for the days when solitude brought insight rather than sorrow. Conversely, loneliness may affect anybody. Individuals with contrasting personality types, introverts and extroverts, share a common experience, isolation. No medical professional can diagnose loneliness, nor can there be a test for it. In contrast to isolation, we often see solitude as an unpleasant experience. Recognizing solitude as a constructive form of silence is essential for improving every aspect of our life. As a result, we are free to concentrate on our thoughts and develop our sense of self without interruption. We can choose solitude, but not loneliness. Solitude's downsides can affect even when surrounded by loved ones. Yeah, for Sarah, it was mixed messaging between the idea and the feeling of the two that vacillated her emotional state of this experience. Loneliness is a distressing isolation. Solitude is intentional aloneness. While solitude may cause loneliness, it also enables self-reflection and creativity. Loneliness hurts, solitude nourishes. By understanding the difference, we can embrace solitude wisely. Sarah always assumed loneliness and solitude were the same, but as she reflects, she sees the key differences. Loneliness is feeling isolated against her will, lack in human connection. We seek solitude alone time for reflection and renewal. Sarah realizes the solo walks that now leave her lonely used to give her solitude's gifts, presence, creativity, and inner peace. She understands her recent loneliness likely comes from neglecting relationships, not the walks themselves. Sarah's realization lights a small spark inside. Could solitude be transformed from her enemy to an ally once more? She vows not to make solitude the enemy when balance of social time. Sarah's insight into their differences renews her appreciation for alone time's restorative power. Loneliness is painful when prolonged, but occasional solitude nourishes us. It is vital for knowing ourselves and resetting. By understanding their differences, we can embrace solitude wisely. While we must be aware of chronic isolation, today's world leaves little space for solitude's gifts. Even so, alone time remains a crucial human need. Our ancestors relied more on close-knit communities, able to have intimate conversations without modern tech interruptions. In contrast, today's influx of technology threatens our solitude. People used to worry about new tech like phones reducing personal space, but current digital devices are more pervasive, diverting attention from introspection. Like Chihiro shedding her childishness after overcoming trials alone in the spirit world, Solitude allows us to reflect and mature. Sarah's journey reveals that occasional solitude, balanced with community, nourishes the soul. By unplugging from distraction and looking inward, Sarah gains wisdom. While past generations enjoy tight-knit communities, the modern influx of technology threatens our solitude. People used to be concerned about new technologies like telephones and televisions, infringing on their personal space. Today's digital instruments, however, are far more pervasive than any in history. Our increasing reliance on technology and digital devices has resulted in a persistent hum of noise and distraction, overwhelming quiet time for self-reflection. Before the iPod, music portability was limited, but the iPod's ubiquity allowed constant music immersion, diverting attention inward. Smartphones have taken this further. Beyond music, we sneak glances at texts 
apps, and social media. Our devices offer limitless temptations that infringe on solitude. Research shows a link between technology overload and worsening mental health, especially in youth, with tech threatening space for rumination. Integrating mindful alone time becomes even more vital for well-being. The internet has become the ultimate source of solace and convenience with limitless information, media, products, services, connections, and even porn at one's fingertips. Unfortunately, it breeds jealousy and discord, muddles our wants and priorities, hardens our hearts to violence and pain, and cements superficial relationships at the expense of genuine ones. As author Cal Newport analyzed, the key issue is that using social media tends to take people away from the real world, socializing that's massively more valuable. The small boost you receive from posting on a friend's wall or liking their latest Instagram photo come close to compensating for the large loss of experience by no longer spending real world time with that same friend. Social media can't replace human connection. Beyond information overload, the lack of solitude also takes a toll on mental health. There was a significant increase in feelings of isolation between Generation Z members between 2012 and 2018. During that time, the percentage of high school pupils worldwide who reported feeling lonely was double what it had been a decade before. That's a massive jump in a short amount of time. In 2021, more than 85% of all Americans owned a smartphone and the number of people using social networking sites hit a tipping point. Therefore, something may have caused this phenomenon. As author Ken Newport analyzed, these teenagers have lost the ability to process and make sense of their emotions, or to reflect on who they are and what really matters, or to build strong relationships, or even to just allow their brains time to power down their critical social circuits. The lack of solitude is leading to a dysfunctional society. People, especially young people, rely more on digital media and less on face-to-face -face contact. The human brain's need for personal interaction is ideal, and virtual interactions often need to catch up to that. With technology threatening meaningful solitude, integrating alone time mindfully into life becomes even more vital for well-being. Sarah pushes past her temporary loneliness, using the alone time to reflect and tap into her creativity. She scribbles poetry, appreciating the beauty of putting words to her innermost feelings. She realizes occasional loneliness is normal, but embracing solitude's gifts is worth it. Determination to rebuild this broken bond with solitude courses through Sarah's veins as she scribbles poetry. As the Row express, there is joy to be found in solitude, stating, I love to be alone. I never found the companion that was so companionable as solitude. Time alone can nourish us deeply. Sever drinks in the silence like a soothing balm for the first time in weeks. Her rapid thoughts slow to a tranquil pace. In today's society, it's easy to feel like we are not doing enough if we're not surrounded by people. However, there are many benefits to spending alone time and enjoying our own company. For one, it can help us relax and de-stress from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. It especially rings true with the quiet quitting movement. Determined not to let loneliness prevent her growth, Sarah pushes past her feelings by re-engaging with solitary joys. She ventures out on long nature walks again, this time keeping her phone tucked away. Sarah also begins setting aside time to write, articulating her innermost thoughts and feelings through poetry. She finds the process cathartic. Focusing on these solitary activities, Sarah rediscovers a sense of meaning and self-awareness that her busy daily life had obscured. She realizes solitude's gifts emerge when embraced mindfully. Our relationship with solitude often depends on our lifestyle and life stage. During busier times focused on achievement, solitude may feel like a luxury. In calmer periods, it becomes a necessity. Regardless of whether we work to live or live to work, alone time provides a space for self-reflection. It allows us to regenerate and recalibrate our priorities. Solitude enables taking stock of where we are and determining where we want to go next. While too much isolation could be detrimental, occasional solitude provides clarity. Time alone lets us tap into our authentic selves beyond societal conditioning. By unplugging from distraction, we open up to new possibilities. Mindful solitude requires courage as we confront our unfiltered thoughts, but this leap into self-understanding helps us appreciate relationships and community more fully. Facing ourselves in solitude leads to greater connection.
as Stephen Batchelor expressed, mindfulness is a balance, reflective stance. Through sustaining this non-reactive stance over time, mindful awareness becomes the basis for one's ethical life. Solitude enables this type of deep ethical self-reflection. Many spiritual traditions emphasize the importance of solitude for self-discovery through meditation. Buddhism focuses on techniques for attaining enlightenment and freeing oneself from suffering. Christian meditation facilitates prolonged prayer for drawing closer to God. Taoism combines mind-body practices for cultivation of Shi. Islam explores reflection for achieving consciousness and creativity. Regardless of the specific tradition, meditation and solitude is valued across cultures as a pathway to wisdom. Quiet contemplation allows us to reconnect with our true selves beyond the distraction of everyday life. Indeed, reconnecting with nature provides a profound way to experience solitude's gifts. Opting for a rural location can lead to a discovering peace. Experiencing outdoor might help us feel more at one with the world. When we are all by ourselves and can give our full attention to the natural world, we may feel a sense of oneness with it. There's magic in reconnecting with nature. Thoreau and others sought solace and isolation from modern life stresses. As Walt Whitman expressed, give me solitude, give me nature. Give me again, O oh nature, your primal sanities. Time alone in nature offers profound renewal. Those who had had this enlightening encounter described it as a supernatural encounter. Some find deeper meaning in this experience, while others find bliss. Still, isolation is essential for reaching true enlightenment. In the Middle Ages, it was common practice for aspiring monks and knights to spend time alone before their formal introduction into their respective professions. The purpose of this vigil was to prepare them mentally and spiritually for the next stage of life. In an additional case in point is the Australian tradition of sending young Aborigines on a walkabout, a time of six months of isolation designed to help them transition into maturity. Solitude is an important for becoming a functioning adult in many cultures. Sitting by the lake, Sarah is lulled into a tranquil state from the rhythmic lapping of waves. A sense of oneness with the water overtakes her. We must take time for ourselves in our connected world and enjoy solitude. Solitude can be a powerful tool for reflection and growth. In solitude, we can contemplate life and desire changes. We can reflect on our accomplishments and set new goals. We can also learn more about who we are and what we believe in. Solitude can be challenging to embrace, but it's worth it. Taking time for ourselves makes us more grounded and aware. As Cal Newport remarks, solitude requires you to move past reacting to information created by other people and focus instead on your own thoughts and experiences. Wherever you happen to be, solitude is not a pleasant diversion but instead a form of liberation from the cognitive oppression that results in its absence. Watching the sunrise alone, Sarah feels a sense of awe at the beauty. Her anxiety seems small in comparison and contemplates the wisdom and philosophy and psychology to grasp how they can help her appreciate solitude. Aristotle's golden mean integrates solitude as a virtue for well-being, avoiding extremes. Too much time alone can be isolating, while constant busyness leaves an emptiness. The golden mean advocates balance, mindful solitude, and moderation. Rather than an extreme, Aristotle saw solitary contemplation as a key for flourishing. It provides space for self-reflection essential for personal growth and insight. The golden mean highlights solitude's power as a virtue, not a vice when incorporated wisely into life. An Aristotelian approach reminds us of alone time's immense value amidst the demands of our hyper-connected world. Psychologist Carl Jung believes solitude facilitates individuation, integrating our unconscious shadow into consciousness. This unifies disparate elements of oneself into a whole, mature person. However, confronting our shadows requires courage. It's easier to avoid this work and indulge addictive habits. Yet engaging our shadows through solitude self-reflection enables living more purposefully. Carl Jung values solitary reflection and active imagination as tools for self-discovery. He used personal reverie and advised patients to take comfort in alone time like their childhood. Carl Jung promoted daydreaming to probe the unconscious and gain insights into oneself. 
Though we can't relive our early years, Jung showed that rediscovering solitary imagination and play from youth can be therapeutic. His work demonstrated the power of solitude for fostering inner wisdom. Reading about Aristotle and Jung gave Sarah a new perspective. She saw solitude not as an extreme, but a virtue integrating unconscious elements to find wholeness. She was struck by the childhood roots of solitude, the comfort and creativity she felt as a girl alone playing imaginatively. Sarah resolved to recreate that through journaling and solo reverie. She now understood solitude as an essential self-care, not selfishness. Her reflection left her with deep appreciation for solitude's gifts of self-discovery. As Charles Bukowski expressed, I was a man who thrived on solitude. Without it, I was like another man without food or water. For some, occasional solitude is vital for well-being. Many view loneliness as something to avoid. There is a danger of prolonged loneliness. It makes sense when we keep ourselves isolated from others or constantly fed with information. The moment we met with quietness, the dread of loneliness swarms. Alas, one reason is to believe that boredom is wrong and a good life is only one step away from browsing social media or binge watching on Netflix. The art of solitude means being aware of why we feel lonely and asking, what personal narrative is contributing to my feeling of loneliness? Human life is fleeting, yet profoundly meaningful. We only have so much time on this earth. It's important to use it wisely. In our hyper-connected world, it's easy to tie self-worth to external validation through social media with likes and popularity. But this sets us up for suffering when the attention inevitably wanes. Periods of solitude provide perspective. Time alone can reveal when our anxiety or sadness stems from unrealistic expectations of constant external validation. Rather than harshly judging ourselves during these lows, solitude enables self-compassion. We can reflect on aligning our self-worth with inner values rather than outside approval. Embracing solitude allows us to nurture connections that truly matter, whether we're family, friends, nature, or our own inner lives. The insights from time alone can teach what it means to live fully. As Stephen Batchelor expressed, I cannot help but see the void in which I am standing as a metaphor for emptiness. The absence of compulsive reactivity, a precondition for the unimpeded space of past that allow human flourishing. Solitude provides this calm emptiness from which insight can arise. Tears stream down Sarah's cheeks as she writes by a candlelight. The emotions flow through her pen, releasing inner truths. Embracing creative pursuits can help make the most of the time alone. Activities like writing, painting, or playing music provide self-expression and mental clarity. Creating art is a constructive use of solitude, just like when Chihiro harnessed her abilities to cleanse the river spirit and spirit it away. The process immersed her in flow and revealed her confident new identity. Like Chihiro, diving into service for the river spirit, setting aside solitary time for creative acts can help us find meaning, stabilize our emotions, and gain wisdom. As Arthur Schopenhauer expressed, true freedom comes from solitude, stating, a man can be himself only so long as he is alone. And if he doesn't love solitude, he will not love freedom. Alone time allows us to tap into our authentic selves. If we are not accustomed to being alone, it's challenging to adjust, but there are plenty of ways to maximize the experience. Here are a few tips. Take advantage of the time for things we love. Whether reading, writing, painting, or taking a long walk, take advantage of the peace to do something we love. Use the opportunity to reflect on our lives and goals. It's easy to lose sight of our priorities in the daily grind. Alone time helps us refocus and determine our life goals. Besides meditation or walking in nature, writing in a journal or writing poetry helps reveal the haunting melody that often hides in the unconscious. In that vast center of knowledge where the craving mind explores, we discover the compass that nudges toward authentic purpose. The ancient philosophy of Stoicism values solitary self-reflection. Stoics believe isolating oneself to ponder questions like, what is within my control brings wisdom. As Marcus already stated, at dawn when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work as a human being. What do I have to complain of if I'm going to do what I was born for? The things I was brought into the world to do, or is this what I was created for? To huddle under the blankets and stay warm. 
Regular time alone provides space to contemplate our behavior and goals. Solitude helps us focus on what we can control and build the four stoic virtues of courage, temperance, justice, and wisdom. Though not central, stoic principles reminds us of our solitary introspection's power for living deliberate. Sarah's heart swells with newfound hope and clarity, like the first rays of sunshine melting away the darkness as she gleaned the wisdom of ancient sources of the Stoics. The key lessons from Sarah's experience are that occasional solitude, balanced with community, nourishes the soul. By unplugging from distraction and looking inward, Sarah gained wisdom. Like Jehido in Spirited Away, Sarah emerged renewed after navigating loneliness to integrate mindful alone time. Both characters model resilience in the face of isolation. The stories teach us that periodic solitude can reveal our deepest strengths when embraced consciously. Take reflective timeouts to gain perspective and creativity. Cherish the joy of missing out. Sarah and Chihiro found that threading solitude throughout life reduces anxiety and fosters authenticity. Their growth shows the power of solitude amid relationships. As we conclude, ponder the wisdom in Lord Byron's verse. There is a pleasure in the pathless woods. There is a rapture on the lonely shore. There is society where none intrudes by the deep sea and music in its roar. I love not man the less, but nature more. Like Byron, we can find restoration in the solitude of nature while still treasuring human companionship. Remember his verse when you seek renewal in solitary wanderings. Let the living earth reawaken your spirit. Appreciate society, but steal away at times to that secluded shore. In nature's embrace, we reconnect with life's music. The art of solitude is not isolation, but integration. Thread mindful on lone time throughout the community. Discover the joy where the pathless woods meet the crowd.